Justice Delayed is a true crime podcast. It covers difficult subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Crime Stoppers website a lot. I mean, a lot. I mean, think about your favorite website and then think about how often you go there on a daily basis and then triple it. And although obviously that's a bit of an exaggeration, I really do go there a lot. It's kind of an emotional experience for me because there's Jennifer on the page all by herself, accompanied by a photo from her memorial service pamphlet with the shortest, just the facts, ma'am, description of Jennifer's murder. And it really makes me sad, because on this page, she's just a statistic. According to a July 10th, 2019 article by the Office of Justice Programs, quote, cold cases constitute a crisis situation, unquote. In the United States, we currently have approximately 250,000 unsolved murders, and that number increases by about 6,000 per year. The OJP has brought 36 experts together and formed a cold case investigation working group. The group's chief recommendation is that law enforcement agencies form dedicated cold case units. Within five years of creating a cold case squad in Washington, D.C., investigators had closed 160 homicides. That's an average of 32 a year. The Office of Justice Programs Bureau of Justice Assistance provides grant funding through two programs that may be available for jurisdictions to use in developing a cold case unit. And we all know there are other options as well, including popular oxygen channel TV shows that might be willing to lend assistance to a small town police department without its own cold case unit. The Season of Justice Corporation supports victims of unsolved violent crimes by contributing to various types of testing, including advanced DNA testing, performed by law enforcement professionals and private entities to assist in resolving these cold cases. They also aid families of victims by assisting with case-specific needs and advocating for continued investigation of such cases. 250,000 unsolved murders, and those are the numbers from 2019. At 6,000 new cases every year, that means we're at about 256,000 unsolved murders by now. That's an average of more than 16 new cold cases every day. These numbers are kind of overwhelming, and it kind of makes you feel like we're destined to keep losing ground as the numbers rise. But do you know what's almost as shocking as the fact that we have about 256,000 unsolved homicides in the United States? The fact that there's only one in Abilene. Does anyone else think that's strange? Abilene is a town of about 124,000 people as of 2019. And since September 16th, 2002, there's only been one unsolved homicide. That strikes me as such a strange statistic that I honestly feel like maybe my computer is defective. Or, or maybe I suddenly forgot how to Google. Is that even possible? But if I did forget how to Google, at least I'm consistent. Because the Abilene Crime Stoppers website has looked like this for months. This week, I just sat and stared at that page, and the longer I looked at it, the stranger it seemed. Eighteen years have passed since Jennifer Servo's murder. A lot can happen in eighteen years. People grow up, they have kids of their own, their perspectives change. They end relationships and friendships, and they start new relationships and new friendships. Sometimes people just drift apart. Sometimes people who were scared are no longer around the people they were scared of. And sometimes people just don't understand how important the information they have really is. I still can't promise you that we're going to solve Jennifer's case, but I can promise you that together, we still have a better chance than any one of us working alone. Jennifer needs justice, and so do you, residents of the Hunter's Ridge Apartments in 2002. I know you're out there. 
So come along with me on my search for justice in the form of a murderer. Hi everyone, welcome back to Justice Delayed, the unsolved homicide of Jennifer Servo. I'm Sharon. So it should come as no surprise to anyone that I haven't received any cell phone records. But I'm still here, and I'm still waiting, and I'm still really easy to find. So I'll keep you posted. We're also still waiting for the results from our expert who's reviewing Jennifer's injuries for us. So this week, we're going to talk about cold cases. I've heard some interesting thoughts on cold cases recently, and it brought up something I hadn't thoroughly considered before. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I've been hearing more and more talk about the dangers of wrongful convictions, specifically in cold cases. I've even heard some people say that they think the chance of wrongful conviction is greater in a cold case than it is in a fresh homicide. And in a lot of ways, that makes a lot of sense. It's also terrifying, because we happen to be trying to solve a cold case, and nobody wants to put the wrong person in prison. So am I waffling? Am I backing down? Definitely no. This case needs to be solved. There's no doubt about that. But in light of this new kind of paradigm, I guess, if I was the Montana boyfriend or the Abilene colleague, I'd be terrified. There's so much hype around solving cold cases. So if this case does get reopened, somebody's going to be labeled a killer. Maybe not publicly. There's a phenomenon that goes on with these cold cases, which is that police clear some of them, but the prosecutor doesn't take the cases to trial. Maybe there's not enough evidence. Maybe witnesses have died or can't be found, which I don't know how much that really applies in this case. But there are many reasons that prosecutors don't take a cold case to trial and therefore never get a conviction. But that knife cuts both ways. You may never get convicted, but you'll also never be free of the shadow this case casts over you. These cases that don't go to trial, some of them are marked cleared by detectives and closed because they believe that they know who the killer is. I don't know about you, but even if they didn't take me to trial, I don't want my name in a file somewhere that says I was the true killer of anyone. Thank you very much. Because what that means is until you die, you have to worry about new scientific technology being invented that will lead police to reopen the case against you, retesting the evidence, and taking you to trial when you're 75 or 80 years old. And if these chances of wrongful conviction are higher in cold cases than they are in fresh cases, which, by the way, I don't have any statistics on that. But if that's true, and I don't think we will know for years, but if that turns out to be true, this could be a real problem, especially in a case like Jennifer's. So I want to say this. I know you guys don't want to send me your cell phone records. And I know you guys think I'm the enemy, but I'm not for at least one of you. For at least one of you, I'm the answer to a silent prayer you've been saying for over 18 years. Somebody, please help clear my name. Somebody, please help me get out from under this burden of people thinking I might have done this. I don't know if you've heard this old joke, and it's not really funny, it's more poignant. It's been told in a variety of different ways, but I found this one on the psychologytoday.com website. A storm descends on a small town and the downpour soon turns into a flood. As the waters rise, the local preacher kneels in prayer on the church porch, surrounded by water. By and by, one of the townsfolk comes up the street in a canoe. Better get in, preacher. The waters are rising fast. No, says the preacher. I have faith in the Lord. He'll save me. Still the waters rise. Now the preacher is up on the balcony, wringing his hands in supplication, when another guy zips up in a motorboat. Come on, preacher, we need to get you out of here. The levee's going to break any minute. Once again, the preacher is unmoved. I shall remain. The Lord will see me through. 
After a while, the levee breaks and the flood rushes over the church until only the steeple remains above water. The preacher is up there clinging to the cross when a helicopter descends out of the clouds and a state trooper calls down to him through a megaphone. Grab the ladder, preacher. This is your last chance. Once again, the preacher insists the Lord will deliver him. And predictably, he drowns. A pious man, the preacher goes to heaven. After a while, he gets an interview with God and he asks the Almighty, Lord, I had unwavering faith in you. Why didn't you deliver me from that flood? God shakes his head. What did you want from me? I sent you two boats and a helicopter. So like I said, not really funny, but kind of fitting under the circumstances. Now I'm not in any way saying that God sent me here to do a podcast. I think he has bigger things on his mind. But think about this. New technology is being discovered all the time. Advances in science are happening every day. And eventually, one of you is going to talk to someone whether it's me, or the police, or someone else. We all know the first one to talk often has the upper hand, whether they're confessing or they're throwing blame on the other person. And that's a terrifying thought, if you're innocent. I'm not saying I'm your friend, and I'm not saying you have to like me. I'm saying I might be able to help you. I'm saying I might be a canoe. So in light of that, what do the rest of us do? We carry on. We help Abilene Police Department have a perfect homicide clearance rate. We persevere. I want to give you a quick update on Sergeant Will Ford. He's not retired, but the email address listed on the Abilene Police Department website for Sergeant Ford is incorrect even though it follows the same format as everyone else's email address at the APD, which is firstname.lastname at abilenetx.gov. Somehow, though, my email always bounces back when I attempt to contact him. He also doesn't have a direct line listed on the website, but to be fair, there are several people who don't, and there is a main line for the Criminal Investigation Division. So Sergeant Will Ford is not retired, but he is hella hard to get in touch with. I'll continue to reach out to him, and I'll keep you posted. So as we're waiting for a response from Sergeant Ford and for the autopsy analysis to come back, I've been working on statement analyses of the Montana boyfriend and the Abilene colleague. Since all of our open records requests have been denied, we don't have any of the statements that they made to police, but we do have all of the public statements that they've made to the media over the years. What has each one said about their relationship with Jennifer? What have they said about the last time they saw her? And how have those statements changed over the years? Next time on Justice Delayed. In the meantime, brainstorm with me. Help guide this investigation by sharing your thoughts and ideas. And listen along as I conduct this sometimes brave, definitely challenging, but mostly heartbreaking investigation into Jennifer's murder. Keep getting the word out about Jennifer's case. I can't tell you how important this part is. We're still trying to reach the people with information about this case. So post about Jennifer's case on social media. Share the podcast promos and the new episodes with your friends as they're released. Invite your friends and family to join our podcast discussion group on Facebook. Post on Instagram or Twitter and use the hashtag Jennifer Servo, hashtag who killed Jennifer Servo, or hashtag solve Jennifer Servo's murder. Follow us on Twitter at Justice Delayed P and on Instagram at Justice Delayed Pod. There's some exclusive content on my social media that you won't see anywhere else. You can email me with questions and ideas at Sharon at JusticeDelayedPod.com. Every time you mention Jennifer's case, it increases our chances of actually reaching the people we need to reach. Whoever they are, wherever they are. A lot can change in 18 years. If you know anything about Jennifer's case, or if you just think you might, contact me. It can be anonymous if it needs to be. If you know someone who was part of this case, contact them. 
Let them know about the podcast and encourage them to contact me and tell their story. If you have a tip about this case, contact the Abilene Police Department at 325-673-8331 or call Crime Stoppers at 325-676-TIPS. You can also find those phone numbers on our website. Be sure to subscribe so you'll get our new episodes as soon as they drop. The next episode drops Monday, April 5th, 2021. Once again, to the Montana boyfriend and the Abilene colleague, I know you both know a lot more than you're telling, and you know what it will take to solve this case. This isn't going to end until Jennifer's case is solved. So join me again next week as I actively search for justice in the form of a murderer. Remember to participate in the brainstorming, send me suggestions for leads to pursue, and ask questions, all on our Facebook discussion group. Or just follow along as I try not to get into too much trouble. Join me on Monday for more about the unsolved homicide of Jennifer Servo. For those of you who wish you'd known about the Beth Karras event on Clubhouse last week, you have another chance. I've invited Beth back, and this time she's talking about the Casey Anthony trial. We're still working out the details, but she'll be back in early April on True Crime Rabbit Hole on Clubhouse. I'll make an announcement once I know more. If you need a Clubhouse invite and you have an iPhone, message me at truecrimerabbithole at yahoo.com. I still have a couple left. So come hear the inside scoop and ask questions about the Casey Anthony trial, only on Clubhouse in the True Crime Rabbit Hole Club. Justice Delayed was written and produced by me. All opinions offered are my own. I want to say thank you to Jennifer's family. Without their support, this podcast wouldn't exist. All music for this episode is provided by Lee Rosevere. You can find his music at happypuppyrecords.ca. Our logo was created by Caitlin Spencer. My sources for this episode are detailed in the show notes. Our success depends on your participation, so remember to send in any leads you think I should pursue or any questions you have about the case. This is Sharon, and I'll be back. <laughs>